from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Give your call to Hartford, Mr. Dollar. Go ahead, please. Hello? Pat McCracken. What'd you get me out of bed for this time? I'm calling from the airport in Dallas. Does that mean you're going on to Nicaragua? Yep. All right, then I know why you're calling. The answer is no, we still haven't found any trace of Constance Lanfear. So why don't you come on back here and start from scratch? Because I have found some trace of Connie Lanfear. Oh, it's Connie now, huh? It sure is, brother. And what's that supposed to mean? Pat, she just happened to occupy a seat aboard the plane right next to mine. Look, Johnny, why don't you work on the facts of the case for a change instead of on the woman involved? Patrick, ever hear of killing two birds with one stone? <laughs> And every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Bluefields, Nicaragua to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the sea legs matter. Expense account item 8, 525. Late supper at the Dallas airport for Connie and myself during the wait for our midnight plane to Mexico City, which we finally boarded and which finally took off. And on this trip, I learned no more, no less from Connie than I had on the flight from New York to Dallas. For instance... Doug and I were so close in everything. Same friends, the same interests. That's why we always took the long yachting trips together. Did everything together. As a matter of fact, I felt that her somewhat overdone assurances of how much she loved her late husband could have been to throw off any suspicion I might have that she'd done him in. Another, for instance... I still can't get over the coincidence of our both deciding to go to Nicaragua at the same time. But believe me, Johnny, Mr. Dollar, I'm... Just as anxious to clear up this whole thing as you are. The more I thought about it, the more certain I was that it was not just coincidence that it put her on the same plane with me, and the more leery I felt. I know the country so well, too. I think I told you the Sea Legs was built in a small shipyard in San Juan del Paro. That's south of Bluefields. Yeah, that's at the lower end of the East Coast, isn't it? You do know something about Nicaragua, don't you? Oh, uh, only what I've seen on the maps. Oh, now, let's see. We can get a plane from Managua to the East Coast. Oh, yes. Nicaragua boasts two or three commercial airlines. I'm sure at least one of them makes a direct flight to Bluefields. Uh, that's where we put in with the sea legs, you know, before... Before she was... Before the beautiful thing went down between those awful Boldero Islands. And took your husband with her. Oh. Yes. Poor Doug. There it was again. More apparent concern over the loss of the sea legs than over the husband she claimed to have loved so much. And still no explanation of why she decided to go back to Nicaragua. Her decision must have been sudden, too, right after I'd seen her at her home on Long Island. From Mexico City, we took a deluxe four-engine plane to Managua. But the last leg to the city of Bluefields was in a two-engine something that looked like war surplus tied together with bailing wire. At midnight, we signed into the Providencia Hotel and after a hearty meal, retired to our respective rooms to make up for lost sleep. I had not planned to wake up at 6 a.m., but fate decreed otherwise. Huh? Uh, what? Ha-ha! You're stealing bat. Yeah, sure. Just a minute, I'll get up and open the door. Uh, no, 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 no. Do not disturb yourself, dear sir. Huh? There, you see, there was no need to disturb yourself. Well, now, just a minute. Who are you? Oscar Patrick Vladimir Poschero. At your service. Oscar Patrick, what? Hey, you, my dear Mr. Dollar, may just call me Oscar, <laughs> now that we are working together. Working together? Whatever Welcome you... Welcome to Nicaragua. And no matter what your needs, I, Oscar Patrick Vladimir Poschero, will provide them for you. Uh, for a small financial pittance, of course. <laughs> Here, uh, let me straighten your pillow. Hey, look, uh, wait. There now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you get the key you just used to open this door? <laughs> As you can see, Mr. Dollar, I am prepared for everything. That is why I can be of such unesteemable service to you. Oh, now, who the devil is that? The breakfast I ordered for you, of course. Ah, 
here, my good man. I will take the tray. Uh, 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 you may collect the tip some other time. Get lost. Is this a gag of some kind? Mr. Dollar, how can you say such a thing? After I just saved you paying that mean little servant a big tip. Uh, here now. Uh, tomato juice, orange juice, cream, chippy fun, toast, oh, eggs, oh. benedict, lamb chops, scrambled eggs, little sausages, toast, honey, jam, and coffee. You expect me to eat all of that? If I am to be of help to you in this important campaign, I must keep my strength up. Oh, I beg your pardon. And at my expense, of course. Of course. After all, nowhere else in Central America can you get such invaluable help as I can give you. Yeah, well, just what gives you the idea I may need your help? Aha, uh -huh. a good question. Oh, here, let me prop you up on your pillow so that you can enjoy this delectable food. I see. There you are. Oh, now, the cheap beef and toast. It doesn't look so good this morning, so I shall take that. And the lamb chop. Oscar, will you please... Uh, now, to business. While you enjoy your breakfast, that is. No, 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 please don't wait for me, Mr. Dollar. Look, to begin with, how did you know my name? Ha! Easy. You signed the hotel register. Okay, but then how did you and know... who has not heard of the famous freelancing insurance instigator with such a lovely, big, fat expense account, huh? Lucky man. Ah. So that's what appealed to you. Yeah, of course. And who am I, Oscar Patrick Vladimir, Vladimir Pascal? Yeah. Exactly. Who am I that I shouldn't learn a couple of tricks or two from such a great man? Oh, brother, it seems to me you've learned plenty already. <laughs> Thank you. And that is why I shall be of such magnitudinous assistance to you in the ceilings matter. For a pittance, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> Say, a uh, hundred dollars a day. <laughs> How about ten? Ninety. Twenty, then. Seventy. Forty? Maybe thirty. Uh, fifty? Maybe twenty a day and not one penny more. <laughs> Sorry, Oscar, but you are not hired. Oh, Mr. Dollar, you bleed me to the quick. How else could you solve this case without me? Do you really know something about the sea legs? And how did you know I came here to investigate it? In the second place, what else would such a distinguished instigator be doing than the case of the American boat lost in the Buldara Islands, especially coming here with Mrs. Lanthier? All right, go on. And in the first place, because I know all about it. All right, all right, Oscar, tell me this. Do you think there's anything phony about the loss of the sea legs? I am sure of it. It was a crime of the first and second water. Why? Because you are here. Oh, you can do better than that. All right. Because I am always sure there is something crooked going on until the guilty ones are proved otherwise or until the innocent ones are proved whatever is left, which is besides the point because I was sure of it in the first place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, the first thing for you to do is make a trip to Porto Gardo. The last point of contact with the sea legs before she was wrecked. Exactly. I have a plane ready and waiting for your own personal use. A plane? Yeah. How else? A hundred and fifty miles by ox cart? Or, or, or both? Well, no, no, no. First, however, I'd like to contact the authorities here in Bluefields. We, what do the authorities know about crime? Me, I know all about it. Yeah, I'm beginning to think you do, Oscar. Too much, probably. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. I respect your high opinion of myself. All right. I don't know yet what your racket is, but... <laughs> that I can make plain to you in two words. Money. Okay, look. If you can get me a small plane... Here, good, sir, is the address to give to the taxi driver when you are ready to go to the airfield, where I shall be waiting for you. Oh? Not the big airport? No, 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 no. That is where the lady, Mrs. Lanthair, would expect you to look for transportation. Oscar, you are the craziest. Thank you. I, I, I knew you wouldn't want her coming along, and if she ever gets in your way during your campaign... You'll keep her out of my way. Yes. At my expense. What else? I'll tell you something, Oscar... If there is a wrong angle to this case, I can't help wondering if she isn't a part of it. You read my mind. You see, we are like brothers under the chin. You see, I have a plane all ready to go. A huh? charter plane. Then we can be on our way before Mrs. Lamphere knows we've left. Hey, you want to set the tray over there so I can get up? Oh, yes, of course. I'll set it right over here on the... Hmm. Hey, wait a minute. What are you going through my pockets for? Oh, just accepting a small tip for bringing up your breakfast. <laughs> Thank you. If only half of what Oscar said was true, it was conceivable that he could be of help to me. I checked with the hotel manager and the local police. They knew Oscar well and told me that he pretty much lived on the occasional American tourist who showed up. That he acted as guide, chauffeur, pilot, anything for a price. That he could be trusted implicitly by whoever happened to be paying him at the moment. And, which was important to me, he knew the country and its people inside out. was a font of information about anything and anybody. So I decided to let him tag along for a while. 
The Federal Maritime, uh, well, the equivalent of our Coast Guard, had headquarters in the harbor area, and I found a captain there who spoke fair English. I'm sorry, Senor Dollar, but you know as much as we do. We sent a boat, of course, but we find no sign of the sea legs or the poor people who go down with her. Nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking of going up to Porto Gardo, where she took off on her last trip, you know. Excellent idea. From there, you can uh, fly out to the Boldaro Islands where the wreck did occur. Now, that's what I was thinking of. But in addition to an airplane, you must uh, also need a pilot and a guide. You have someone to suggest? I see. There is but one. Senor Oscar Patrick Vladimir, Vladimir Pascaro. Precisely. Item 9, 20 cents American for a three-mile ride and an old Model T Ford to the little private airstrip where, true to his word, Oscar had rented an almost brand-new two-place plane for us. He had it warmed up and ready to go. So fasten your belt, Mr. Dollar, relax, and enjoy it and it'll take off. You sure you can fly this thing, Oscar? Ha! I am the finest pilot in Nicaragua, maybe in the whole world. I'm even a co-pilot. Yeah. Just how much is the use of this plane costing me, Oscar? For me, a special rate, so don't worry about it. Here we go, into the... How much? Well, the usual price is $35 a day, American. But me, I always have a deal. And that's on account of I give the field so much business. So now that that is said... Oscar, how much? $45 a day. Uh, Do you see what a beautiful view we have from... 45? Look! The bay and the Caribbean on one side, and the flat, empty marshes and plains on the now other. Now, wait a minute, and look. If $35 ahead. a day is a regular rate, what's so special about 45 for me? Oh, no, Mr. Dollar. For me. Surely you wouldn't expect the finest pilot in the whole entire world to work for nothing. Why, you... Okay, okay. But what took you so long getting to the airfield, Mr. Dollar? Oh, a couple of calls I wanted to make us all. Why? Why, you have disappointed me. And all the time, I thought you had the uttermost confidence in me. Now, what's that supposed to mean? First, you tell me you do not want the lady to know you're awake and up and going. Mrs. Lanfear? Yes. And then what happens? You tell her all about it. What makes you think that? Why else would she come tearing out to the airfield while I was waiting for you? Wait a minute. To rent herself a plane and take off in it. What? She took off just a couple of minutes before we did. Connie Lanfear, chartering a plane. Why? And to go where? And after her offer to stick by me and help me, why would she do it without letting me know? There were a lot of questions to be answered in this case, and most of them to be answered by Connie Lanfear. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the sea, the rocks, and dear old Mother Nature bring some pretty startling facts to light. And the case takes a sudden twist. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 